In this video, we're gonna cover the Cinebot 25 from Gap RC. It is a brand new 2.5 inch Cinewhoop that just came out. And if you are looking for a complete guide, tutorial, setup, repairs, this will be a great video for you. This is gonna cover everything you need to know about the Cinebot 25, everything from setting up a receiver, binding ELRS, TBS crossfire on your Cinebot 25, as well as beta flight setup. We're gonna talk about switches. We're also gonna do two different rate profiles in this video for the community, for GEP RC community and the Drone Camps community. We're gonna give you indoor rates profile, as well as a beginner rates profile, two different additional profiles for this Cinewhoop to make it fly even better and softer for beginners and people who are interested to film indoor real estate. We're also gonna talk about propeller orientation, replacement, prop guard replacement in this video, as well as our suggested battery sizes. We're gonna do a complete breakdown of this quad to show you how easy it is to take apart and access the G4 inside, the flight controller, the ESCs, the motors, and everything. We're also gonna cover DJI 03, how to bind it up, SD card slot, USB access to your DVR and your onboard videos. And finally, we're gonna give you some cinema flying tips in this video for the Cinebot 25 to get you better cinema videos. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Feel free to skip ahead to the chapter that you need if you're trying to look for information on tutorials and setup or rates for the Cinebot 25. First part in this tutorial series is we're gonna bind up the TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. It is in the very back of this quad and you have an access port right here that we're gonna show you. So go ahead and power on your radio and switch over to your model menu in the setup guide. You should be running an external module in the back like we have here. To activate that, you need to go into the setup menu all the way down to the bottom and you need to turn on external crossfire CRSF right here, CRSF protocol, and turn off the internal module. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and return and exit and you'll see that you have a module that's lit up in the back. So we have that ready to go. Now we can bind up the model. So now that you have your external module on, we wanna bind up the receiver. So go ahead and plug in the quad itself. And mine was already bound up, but we're gonna go ahead and press long press here, and we're gonna go into the menu. You wanna select XF transmitter, and you're gonna start the bind process by pressing bind here. And on the very bottom of the quad, there's an access point. If you can't see where it's at, I recommend using your phone light and that will show you where the gold bind button is. Stick your bamboo skewer in there and press that button. Once you press that button, it'll start the, the bind process and it'll ask you if you wanna update this receiver and you wanna go ahead and say yes, update the receiver and it will start the binding procedure after that and then it should be done. Again, I'm gonna use my phone here to look in there. And once you have it pressed once, it should go into bind mode, start updating the receiver. And when you see a green light, that process will be done. And now you should have a green light inside the quad's frame as well as your module. In this chapter of the tutorial, we're gonna go over binding up ELRS receivers to your radio. The first thing you wanna do is make sure that your radio is on ELRS version 3.0 or better. This receiver on this quad is ELRS 3.0. So we're gonna do a three-step process here. We're gonna go ahead and go into the radio settings, into the system settings where Express LRS is in OpenTX or EdgeTX. And you get to that menu by pressing the system button. It'll take you to Express LRS here. Go ahead and press that button. You're gonna leave the packet rate to 150 hertz, the switch mode to hybrid. Turn off model matching for now unless you have multiple models on your radio. If this is your first one, congratulations. Now go down to bind, and very simply, after we press and plug in the battery three times, we're gonna hit bind. So go ahead and hit the bind to start. Now that your radio's in bind mode, go ahead and plug in the quad one, two, three times and if you see a solid blue light on both the radio and the quad inside the frame you will have bound up your receiver now that you've bound up your Cinebot 25 receiver whether it's ELRS or TBS Crossfire it's time to grab a data cable we're going to go ahead and show you how this quad is set up and what we suggest for switches so go ahead and plug in your USB cable to the back of the quad and we're gonna go ahead and open up Betaflight. And at this point, you should have installed Betaflight already, so go ahead and plug in your USB cable to your computer as well as your Cinebot 25. 
Now, once you're inside Betaflight, we're gonna be on the setup screen right here. Make sure your quad is level and check all of your directions, backwards, left, right, and forward, and it should look like this. If what you see on the screen right here is not level, go ahead and calibrate the accelerometer. That way your quad will fly nice and level and won't be drifting to one side or the other as much. But then again, these quads don't have position hold, so it's gonna be up to you to keep it in one spot. It will drift with wind and other types of external forces. So next we're gonna go down to receiver and we're gonna to check to see that the receiver is set up correctly and we see channel maps moving. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on the radio. And at this point, if you don't see any type of action here, go ahead and refresh it. And I already see that mine is active. So all these should change right here on the screen. So we're gonna check the roll axis on your right stick, go left and it should look like this and right, left and right, that looks good. Now we're gonna go forward on the pitch. It should go up and down like that. You can see the quad up. There's a simulation of the quad moving. Now we're gonna to go to the left stick. This will be throttle up, down. We'll do yaw left and right here, and that looks good. Now, at this point, if you haven't added any switches inside your radio, you need to add about four switches for this basic setup. So activate auxiliary one through four, and that's how we're gonna set up our switches in the next part of this review. So we're gonna go ahead over now to the modes. And at the very top of the screen, this is where auxiliary one is gonna be. So you can toggle back and forth to receiver and modes to check that things are set up properly. So aux one is our SE switch on the boxer. If you're following along with the boxer, good for you, because it's my favorite radio. SE switch is there. We're gonna put our mode switch on the SB switch. We're gonna have beeper on SC here. And SD switch is likely gonna be turtle mode. So now we're gonna go back to modes and we're just gonna check the arm switch right here. And again, the arm switch is the flat button SE switch. That looks good there. Now we're gonna check our mode switch. I mean, you can add horizon. If you wanna add another uh, mode here, we'll go ahead and add, add range. And you need to change it to auxiliary two. That way it's on that switch. And we're gonna leave this right in the middle right here. And I'm gonna tell you something that's gonna help you out if you're brand new. Uh, once you switch this, you'll see that it moves. We're just gonna go ahead and grab it by the middle, slide it over. You can also grab these little tabs on the end and slide those over and make them nice and even. And now back to angle and you'll see them switch back and forth there when I move the SB switch. So if I go down to the third position of the switch all the way down, that would be acro. If you don't want acro mode on there and you just wanna to stick to horizon or angle mode, just slide it all the way across, it'll still be in horizon. If you just wanna keep horizon or if you wanna keep angle mode, you can click this little X button right here and that will take it off completely. And you can just keep angle and acro on your quad. So now when we go back to auxiliary two there, angle mode, now you're in acro or angle, pretty simple. Now, if you don't see any of these things moving around, your sticks are not moving inside Betaflight, what you really need to do is go to the ports and I'm gonna show you the port setup. If you lost this and you, you, maybe you reformatted the firmware on your flight controller and you lost all the settings, this would be a great video for you because we're gonna show the stock PIDs in this video. We're also gonna show you some custom rates for indoor flying and beginner rates. Um, but this is the ports setup right here and this is how it comes from the factory. UART1 checked on. This is the MSP configuration checked on right here. And far over to the right there, this has to be on for your OSD to be working. It's set up for HD OSD. If you have HD, obviously, it's gonna be MSP display port right here. Make sure that is checked and that UART1 is checked for MSP in this column here, not zero RX. UART2 is where your receiver, ELRS or TBS crossfire receivers are. And that's on zero RX there. And that will activate your sticks and your channel maps inside this receiver tab. So if everything is set just like that, you should see channel maps moving and switches working. If you don't see switches working, that means you need to set them up inside your radio. And there is other tutorials for that part for activating switches. But as many switches on your radio as you want, you can set up. Now let's go back to the modes tab here and let's add some more modes to the Cinebot 25. 
The next thing we want to add is the beeper, and we're going to put that on auxiliary three. And this will not chirp unless you have a few things going here. This does not have an external beeper, and the beeper is working off the ESCs. So it's not super loud, but it does work. To hear this work, you're going to need to plug in your battery. So we're going to go ahead and plug in this battery. And now it works. So that is on the SC switch. And if you didn't have this set up, let's go ahead and delete it there and I'll show you how to do it. Add range, auto, you're gonna to select to aux three and move that slider all the way over to the right. Or, you know, you can put it on the second position there. So if you move this three position switch, one, two, three here, you'll see that it's active there, but you won't hear it. If I press save, that activates what the change that we just made. So now your beeper is set up to start on switch position two and three. Back to one to turn it off. Now, if you want flip mode or turtle mode on here, we can look for it at the bottom. It's called flip over after crash. And we're gonna add that one on aux four. So go down to aux four, slide that over, click save. And now you will have turtle mode active on your Cinebot 25. Now go ahead and go to the configuration page. We're just gonna run through a few things on the configuration page. And this will be the final steps before we start to play around with the indoor PID rates. Uh, we're gonna play around with those and I'll also show you the stock PID setting in case you lost them or you reformatted your flight controller. So on the configuration page over here in the system configuration, we're gonna leave all this the same. The gyro update frequency is eight kilohertz and four kilohertz there for the PID loop frequency. You want accelerometer on. We don't have any GPS, so we don't have a barometer or magnometer on there. And we have the board spun around to 180 degrees on the sensor and board alignment here. We're gonna go down, no accelerometer trim. We got the personalization. You can change the craft name or the pilot name inside your HD OSD, which is kind of nice. And we wanna have arming angle set to 180 here. So make sure this is set to 180 if you're resetting your settings in the Cinebot 25. Uh, also, RX loss and RX set. I mentioned earlier that the beeper is set to an ESC beeper. So you need to have these two checked in order for that to work. If these are unchecked, you won't get any beeper response from the Cinebot 25. So make sure you do that. Uh, as far as the beeper configuration, these are different alarms and things. You can just leave those on if you want. You can turn some of these off. We're also gonna leave air mode turned on. We don't have GPS, but if you install it, uh, like I said, the G4 Taker can have GPS on there and you can install GPS. So later on, uh, we may do a tutorial on that as well. Turn GPS on if you have it. We're gonna leave OSD on. And the rest looks good here. So we can go ahead and save and reboot if you did any changes. And then you come back into Betaflight. You're pretty much done with the Betaflight setup. In this chapter, we're gonna cover the Cinebot 25 indoor rates. I know a lot of you guys want that, so we're gonna give that to the GAPRC and Drone Camps community. We're gonna scroll down to where it says PID tuning. And GAPRC has done several different profiles and rate configurations here. Uh, we have profile number one, which is PID tuned for a GoPro 8, and I'm assuming that's their decased GoPro 8. Uh, you can also go to profile two, and it will say GoPro 10. Uh, profile three will say nothing here in this PID profile name. And the stock PIDs are set up and here on this screen. If you need to refer back to this, if you had to you know, reformat your flight controller, you reformatted the firmware, you lost all your settings, here they are on the screen right here. So take a screenshot of this, blow it up, and put it back on your quad uh, in rate profile number one. Now we're gonna go down to rate profile number three, and we're gonna change the rate profile to the right of that, click on that, and turn that to rate profile number three. Uh, we're gonna make some changes here in the rate profile settings. Now we're gonna leave the PIDs the same. Those are all the same as the stock PIDs here. So we're gonna click on the next tab over. It's rate profile settings. And we're gonna scroll down. These are the actual uh, rates in here. So we're gonna leave that checked on actual, not KISS, race flight, or beta flight, uh, actual. So we're gonna change a few things in here to make it nice and easy for your quad. So uh, we're gonna put some scale throttle limit on here and we're gonna turn that throttle limit down to about 85 over here on the right hand before we get into adding any of these numbers here. So I'm gonna go ahead 
And so we're gonna set the scale throttle limit to 85%. So we're gonna go ahead and click save there to save your changes. And again, that's on profile three, rate profile number three. So if you want to not use this later, you can go back and change it. And once you change it, you can press save and that will activate it on your quad. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and add, uh, we'll add a little bit of throttle expo on here. We're just gonna go up to about, let's say right around uh, 30. And we're gonna save there, 0 0.30, okay? And now we're gonna go over to the expo. We're gonna add about 25% expo on the roll, 25 on the pitch, and 25 on yaw. And you're gonna press save there. Now we're gonna, we're gonna actually turn down the max rate here. So um, in this center column, it says 670 is the default. So we're gonna change that down to about 450. Okay, and we're gonna soften up those rates. You can see that curve down below start to smooth out. So we're gonna leave those about 450. And on the yaw as well, we want those all to match up so it'll feel nice and flowy. Now we're gonna change the center sensitivity. Um, and, and in this case, you know, you can, you can raise it or you can lower it. So in this case, we're gonna raise the center sensitivity down to about 40. Uh, and this is gonna make it super soft on the sticks for you. Especially if you're a beginner, this will help you out big time. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and press save again. And now we have a very slow rate for indoor flying on the Cinebot 25. Save these settings inside Betaflight and you'll have a much softer cinema experience for indoor professional video. In this chapter, we're gonna cover Cinebot beginner rates and I'm gonna show you how those are set up and how you need to set those up and save them to your quad. So inside Betaflight, once you're connected, scroll down to PID tuning and we're gonna set this one up on profile number four. So the profile number four is selected rate profile number four as well to match that. And we're gonna name this beginner. So for the PID profile name, we're gonna leave all the PIDs the same here, but we're gonna call this beginner and press save right there. And now we're gonna go over to change the rates. So a couple things we wanna do in here, we're gonna leave the rates type as actual. And over on the throttle limit, you wanna make sure scale is selected and change the throttle limit to about 70. That'll make it so that we're not gonna kinda get overpowered. Uh, these rates will also work for indoor flying, which is great. Uh, throttle mid set to 0 0.50 and the throttle expo at 1.0. Um, go ahead and press save there once you've made those changes. And now we're gonna go over to the basic acro rates. Uh, so first, very far on the right hand side for the expo 0.85, for that one on the roll axis on pitch 0.85, y'all 0.85 as well as the max rates set them all to 750 here and we want the center sensitivity for the roll pitch and y'all to be 80. now once you do that you'll see this nice smooth rates profile down here and go ahead and press save there and now you've set up your profile for your rate profile number four on profile number four and beginner rates are all ready to go. This is gonna make your quad fly much smoother. And when you back off the throttle, it's really gonna to come to uh, almost a standstill inside when you're flying indoors. Uh, this will also help you outside not fly quite as fast and have a little more control when you wanna slow the quad down. Now, the biggest tip I can give you as well for the Cinebot 25, if you're a beginner, bring this camera almost down to level and this will also help you fly slower. If you raise the camera up, that will help you fly faster. In this chapter of the video, we're gonna discuss Cinebot 25 propeller orientation and setup. This quad is set up to be right turn rear. So motor number one is right turn, motor number two here is left turn, motor number three is also left turn, motor number four is right turn. And typically with quadcopters, the adjacent motor is usually going to be turning the same direction. So both of these are turning to the right, both of these are turning to the left. And again, the way these motors are numbered is motor number one, two, three, and four. If you need to replace a prop, 
on the inverted motor type center whoops, it's very important that you put the prop on correctly. So you want to refer to Betaflight in the motor direction tab um, and you can see which direction they're going. But this should give you a visual. If you need to refer back to this, you can. Grab your M2 driver. There are two bolts. You say we're gonna replace this prop right here. Uh, remove these two prop bolts and set them to the side. And when you're replacing inverted motor props, it's very important to pay attention to which direction that the propeller is facing. Uh, I have myself even put these on the wrong way because I'm looking at this, it's facing up like this, but actually it should be facing down like that. So when you put this prop on, make sure that the leading edge is facing up to the right. So you can see that's facing up. If I were to put it on like this, uh, like a typical upward facing motor, that would be backwards on a downward facing motor center whoop. So we're gonna flip that over, make sure that leading edge is facing up towards you. And we're gonna slide that on the motor shaft. Now we have a new prop on there. Go ahead and grab one of your screws, put that right down inside the prop and twist the prop until you feel it hit the motor hole. Go ahead and put the other one in there. And we're gonna drive both of those back down. And a tip to new guys, if you use bolts that are too long, if you replace the bolts with some other bolts, they can get down inside the motor and destroy your motor on takeoff. So be very careful about that. It will short out the motor if you put the wrong screw in there. So keep your screws all together for your motors. Once you feel it's nice and snug, you've now done your prop replacement on your Cinebot 25. In this chapter that's the Cinebot 25 tutorial, we're going to do a quick teardown and how to remove the prop guards. Um, so there are several screws that you'll need to re remove in this tutorial. Uh, first, we're gonna start out with the outside screws and remove this strap right here, set that to the side. And this is my first time removing these screws, so I may take off some that are not needed to come off, but we're just gonna do this together here. Take off these two top screws on the outside. Just kind of follow along with me in this tutorial if you're working on yours. And I like to use little ceramic cups, like little sauce cups to put my screws in. That's usually something I do. Make sure these screws don't get stuck to your motor magnets as well. So uh, we're gonna go looking around this frame for additional screws for the prop guards. There should be two up front here beside the camera, one on each side. And that's gonna release the front of the prop guards. And so far we've taken off three bolts. We'll see how many bolts it takes to remove the prop guards from the Cinebot 25. So I've heard some people say this looks like it's harder to work on, but uh, we're gonna address some of that in this video. I just have a feeling it's not that hard to work on. Um, some people get intimidated. So there, we already have uh, half of it off right there. So we have one in the back. We have two in the back here. And let's just double check that. So two by the antenna. And again, if we take off the wrong ones, we're gonna break this whole quad down for you today in this video, so um, it's all good. We're removing this one. And this should release this antenna in the very back. We'll check on the bottom of the quad, make sure there's any bolts down there that might be hiding and holding this on. So that whole assembly comes off when I release those two bolts. Okay, that one doesn't want to come out. Come on, baby. So this looks like a three-piece assembly here. It has the silicon piece for the Immortal T, this printed piece, and this other printed piece. And this goes right over the top of everything there, back this direction. So when you're putting it back together, this is how it goes. Okay, so we're just gonna leave that to the back right there, and there's a hidden screw under here. There's actually two, and we'll just give it a pull here and see if it moves at all. So we still have some more holding it. Nope, that's it, that's it, you guys. So that was how many screws to remove the prop cars. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's actually pretty easy, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and gently open up the quad. Now, if you needed to replace your prop guards, you're gonna have to do a couple more things here. The first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to remove the screws for the DJI unit on the bottom as well. So these are also M2 
two screws. So go ahead and take your driver and let's remove those four screws right there together. Okay, those came out and those are long screws. Those come all the way out of the DJI 03 unit. So set those to the side. And those have a little different color on top. So when you go to put these back on, you just notice that they have a little bit of a, a light steel look to them versus the darker uh, M2 bolts on the rest of the frame. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this last one out here. And at this point, we should be able to remove these prop guards. And that's it. We just took the prop guards, slam off of the Cinebot 25. That wasn't so hard, was it? So to put those back on, you have those six screw holes here. So say this one's broken, you've got two in the back by the antenna, two in the middle, and two up front. And that is pretty much it for the Cinebot 25 prop guards to remove them. And to put everything back on, you're just going to basically put this on first, make sure that this goes over top of your camera cover here. This is gonna cover your camera cable and you're gonna put it back on the bottom of this plate with those four DJI 03 screws. That's what I would suggest doing first, and then you can slap it all back together and then reassemble this back plate back here. So now it's time to put on your brand new prop cards, and there's a little bit of a trick to this. So what I did was I put one screw on the unit where the camera cable covers it up, um, and then you can drive the other three screws down here. If you want to try to hold that camera cable uh, on top of the camera cable cover on top, that is going to be tricky. So uh, the first thing you're going to need to do is, um, and you can see where I, I went ahead and put one screw there, um, and I have that kind of ready to go. So the way you have to put this back in there is this USB port has to be lined up with this trapdoor right here. So uh, otherwise, if you turn it this way, you're not gonna have access to your USB port. So go ahead and drop that down in there. And you can go ahead and make sure it's nicely flat and seated. And the trick here is to uh, figure out, you know, you guys are good at this, figure out where the hole is. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and rotate this 03 so that it's lined up with the trapdoor. The trapdoor is kind of gonna be your guide here. So. Uh, we're going to push that all the way up against the trap door and we're going to flip it over and we're going to look for the first 03 installation hole there so we're going to go ahead and start spinning our, our bolt there and hoping that's seating properly and don't tighten it up all the way yet just leave it a little bit loose so that we can move it in case we need to line up the next one so we're going to go ahead and look for the next one there that's where I have that bolt. Um, so we're gonna drop this, basically the third screw in. You know, and this may be unorthodox, but hey, FPV is pretty unorthodox. Um, again, like the reason that I put the bolt under there is because um, it's extremely hard to uh, hold that camera cable cover on. Now this is your third one. And now the O3 is seated back in there and you have access to your USB C port underneath here. And if you move that, you should see that your USB C port's there, SD card access, and now you're back in business. So what you need to do now is you need to put the top of the Cinebot 25 back on. So this is gonna take some uh, paying attention here that you don't pinch any of these cables. Make sure your O3 cable to the camera and to the unit is, is out of the way, and that all your cables going to the back of the Cinewoop are tucked in inside the frame here. So it looks everything like everything's pretty well tucked in. So now we're just gonna go ahead and try to seat it. And this may take a moment here. Just gonna make sure we have this absolutely right. Okay, push that down. And again, try to make sure you're not pinching any of the cables. So we have six bolts to put on here. Um, you can start at the front, work your way to the back if you want. Now that pops into place. And once you're nice and flush on the sides here, you can go ahead and I would start in the middle. So go ahead and grab your shorter M2 screws and those go straight down to the prop guards there. 
on both sides of those uh, both sides of that battery strap set up right there so make sure that's nice and snug don't over tighten it grab another short screw we're going to save the long screws for the very back where this antenna assembly goes so screw this one on okay that's screw number two and now grab two of the shorter screws for the front we're going to save that antenna assembly in the back for for last it looks like a fun little part to uh, put back together so so far i mean it's not really that hard like people you know, say it is, oh, it looks hard to work on. Um, you know, Cinewoops are kind of their own animals. And, you know, uh, if you take your time and <laughs> try not to get frustrated or get too in a hurry, it, it's, not, it's not that bad. I mean, it's a, it's a unibody with an AIO flight controller. It's pretty simple. So now we have all four screws on. Your new prop guards are installed uh, except for the rear assembly. So here we're going to kind of take our time to make sure everything is properly seated here. So we're going to run our cable, make sure it's behind there. And there is a little kind of larger spot here and that should hold it down. So we're going to make sure that none of these cables are on top of your USB-C port back there. So move those to the side. Now we're gonna come down with this. Make sure your antenna is up right up through the middle there. Mine had a bit of an angle to it. Now if you don't have enough length, you may need to take, um, take this assembly back apart if anything is being pinched there in the back. So be very careful right here. But that looks pretty good. Um, looks like my antenna looks like it's spun around the other way. I can bend that back. Um, and also, you know, another tip, when you're taking this frame, the prop guards off, do not remove this screw right here. Um, that's gonna release this assembly underneath here. That's the USB-C assembly. So don't do that when you're, you're taking yours apart. Those two screws right there for the X-T30 because um, that holds everything below it. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back on. And all this does is cover this up right here. So um, just push everything inside there, make sure everything is inside. Okay. And you can reposition your antenna if you need to. So now we're gonna take these two M2 bolts here. We're gonna bring everything over. And just take your time on this one. Okay, so once everything looks good, don't forget the other part to this assembly. There is a second piece that goes on here and kind of clamps our antenna in place. So once we have that on there, and that looks right, we can go ahead and screw that down. It's going to go here. It's going to bring your antenna to a vertical fashion right there. So. Um, and you can adjust your antenna a little bit if you need to. So once that, those two pieces are together, go ahead and grab one of your screws. And we're going to try to push that through this assembly and down to the frame. Okay. And that one's going in nicely. Okay. Don't over tighten it. Grab your second screw. And that's about it for prop guard replacement. It's in about 25, it's not too bad. Okay, we're going to go ahead and screw that one down. And make sure they're nice and firm, don't over tighten. Okay, and we can adjust that antenna just a little bit there. And now we are done. In this chapter, we're going to cover the three recommended battery sizes for the Cinebot 25. And to start, my smallest battery for freestyle is going to be the 4S 650 milliamp battery. If you're looking to keep the Cinebot 25 under 250 grams, this is the battery to do that. If you want to go up a little bit, you can get the Sub 250 720 milliamp batteries. It's going to give you a little longer flight time, should get you in about the five and a half to six minute range. If you want to get above six minutes on this quad, you can use a 4S 850. That's going to get you over 250 grams, but this one will get you the longest flight time. So freestyle battery, standard size battery, and the more long range long flight battery is the 850 milliamp. So 650, 720, and 850 batteries is suggested on the Cinebot 25.
In this chapter of the Cinebot 25 tutorial, we're going to show you how to bind up the DJI 03 to your goggles. Now, if you have the goggles too, go ahead and push the middle button here to get your goggles to go into bind mode. And also make sure that they are set to DJI 03 in the setup menu. So press and hold here. You'll hear it start to beep. Once it starts to beep, go ahead, make sure your quad is on and give that a second. Let the DJI 03 load up. And right now it's looking for the transmitter. So I'm just gonna turn on my transmitter because it'll continue to beep. But on the very bottom of this quad, there is an access port on the opposite side of the trapdoor. So flip your Cinebot 25 over and put your bamboo skewer right through there. And if you press lightly, you'll see it start to blink. And when it goes green, you're all bound up in your goggles and you're good to go. So at this point, guys, in this complete guide, you should be pretty familiar with the Cinebot 25. I think it's kind of a nice upgrade as far as the prop guards go. If you watch my review, I crashed mine into our bench by the front door and it took a hardwood hit at the very front of the quad and it did not break the prop guard. So that tells me that as far as this one versus the Cinelog series goes, it's gonna be a while before you break these. If you break these, please do comment down below and let us know how you broke yours. Uh, don't tell me it just flipped over in the grass and broke either, because that's gonna be one of those uh, internet lies uh, to try to get a, a free pair of prop guards from GapRC. So um, they see you guys coming, so don't try that. These are pretty durable. Um, maybe in the coldest of situations would I see these maybe have a crack, but we'll see how they hold up coming up this spring and summer. Uh, but for now, I think they're going to be much more durable than any of the Cinelog series. Those have broken on me before. And the Cinebot original, the Cinebot 30, had much stronger prop guards than any of the Cinelogs as well. So, um, but you know, on this channel, I can break stuff. Be sure to go back and watch the full review of this thing smacking that bench by our front door. It's pretty crazy. Now, if you are somebody who is wanting to use this as your real estate drone, this is the one I would pick over the Cinelog 25. The 25 and the 35 have some of the best reputations out there for cinema filming. The 35 would be an outdoor cinema rig. If you wanna fly and chase drift cars and things like that, get a Cinebot or a Cinelog 35 V2. That's a 6S Cinewhoop that will haul ass and it will carry a full-size GoPro. If you're doing indoor real estate type of stuff, get this one. You wanna to go to our beginner rate profile. You can use either the beginner rate profiles on this quad or you can use this indoor rate setup that we have. The Drone Camp's rates are very nice and it slows this quad way down. Uh, as far as cinema goes, the next biggest tip that I can give you, if you're brand new to this, lower that camera all the way down as far as you can get it. That's gonna bring you much better video indoors and slow this quad way down. If you're trying to make those epic, smooth fly-through videos, this is gonna be something that you can't just jump into and be a professional at right away, it's gonna take some practice. Uh, I would start out on a simulator first and learn how to fly as slow as possible. Using great rates can really change the way a quad flies. And this is completely different than trying to fly FPV freestyle where you're doing flips and rolls and a bunch of fast maneuvers. Use high rates for that. And for this, we're using much lower rates and a lot of stick, a lot less stick sensitivity, as well as our expo. So we put some exponential in there. We also put a throttle limit because we don't want to go up to 100% throttle and crash into the ceiling. Uh, so as long as you use those types of rates, soften everything up, make your experience super slow and flowy. Also turn on Rocksteady 2.0 inside your DJI 03, and that will give you electronic stabilization as well and smooth out a lot of this Cinewhoop's uh, characteristics for being a little bit twitchy. And, you know, your videos all come down to you. The best advice that I could give you is fly as many packs as you possibly can. Fly at least five, six packs a day and practice going slow. And over time, you're gonna become a great indoor cinema pilot. So good luck to everybody out there. I appreciate you guys watching my videos, my tutorials, my reviews. And again, if you're someone brand new who needs us to set up your quad, we also have the FPV Service Center and I will set it up myself, set up all your switches, bind it to your radio, bind it up with your DJI goggles and send it back to you. It's a great service. You can check that one out at dronecamps.com. 
and we will take care of you, whatever quad you have, ELRS, TBS, Crossfire, whatever radio, we'll set it up, send it back to you and get you going. So if you have some quads laying around, like I know some of you guys do, just send them to me, let me set them up for you and send them back. But again, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this tutorial on the Cinebot 25, please do share it with the GAPRC community and anybody who needs softer rates for indoor flying, as well as instructions for props, teardown, or just uh, replacing the prop guards. Tons of information in this one, all for you guys. I'm Justin Davis, guys. Take care, and I will definitely see you on the next one.